In this video, we're going to look at how to use the new Unity Dots physics. We're going to check out the various samples and then experiment with all the physics components, do some raycasts and play with events. Let's begin! Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and this channel is all about helping you learn how to make your own games with in-depth tutorials made by a professional indie game developer. So if you find the video helpful, consider subscribing. So Unity Dots, if you're not familiar with it, stands for the Data Oriented Technology Stack. It's composed of the Entity Component System, the Job System, and the Burst Compiler. Essentially, it promises epic performance several orders of magnitude better than working with game objects. For a more detailed explanation of Dots in ECS, check the links in the description. Here we're going to look at the implementation of physics in Dots. So in this scene here, I have the Unity Physics package installed, as well as the Entities package. Now let's first look at the samples and then we'll play around with the physics ourselves. The samples are located in this GitHub repo. There's a link in the description, so check it out. Here I have downloaded and opened the project. So over here you have a whole bunch of demos covering all sorts of physics interactions. For example, here the most basic demo is just hello world made with physics objects. So as we run the game, there you go, the letters fall down. And then we can pick them up and drag them around. There you go, we have a bunch of physics interactions. And if we pause the game and look at the hierarchy, there you go, we have no objects in here. However, if we go into our window, analysis, and into our entity debugger, here we can see all of the various letters. And here in the inspector, you can see all of the dots physics components. So in this case, we have the collider, we have some mass, a velocity, and damping. So as you can see, you can inspect all of these demos to see how they work. And for example, over here on the last one, we have one of the most complex ones. Here it is, we have some cars and a bunch of objects. So over here, you can see a bunch of physics interactions. So we have a car and all of them working with physics on the wheels. Then you can see the antennas, which look very springy. Over here on this car, you can see the joints and hinges on the doors. And you can also see the box staying inside. So as I move and I stop, and there you go. And again, all of this is using the dots physics package. So go ahead and get the samples and then inspect all of the various demos and all of the code is here for you to learn from. This video is made possible thanks to these awesome supporters. Go to patreon.com slash unitycodemonkey to get some perks and help keep the videos free for everyone. Okay, so now that we've looked at the samples, let's play around with it. Here we are in an empty scene. Now we want to make a very simple test. Let's make a ball bounce up and down. Now there are two ways we can do this. We can do it using normal rigid bodies and colliders with the conversion workflow, or we can use the dots physics components directly. Let's first use normal rigid bodies. So we do exactly like we've always done. So over here we create a new cube. So let's stretch it out to make it our floor. Okay, so over here we have our floor. And as you can see, we're using a regular box collider component. Now all we need to add is the convert to entity script. And that's pretty much it. Now this object will live as a collider in the dots physics world. Now let's make the ball. So over here we create a new 3D object. Let's make it a sphere. And again, it already contains a sphere collider. Now in order to make it fall down, all we need to do is add a regular rigid body component. Make sure that gravity is enabled so it falls down. And again, all we need to do is add the convert to entity script. All right, so that's pretty much it. We set it up exactly the same way as we did with normal game objects. The only difference is we add the convert to entity script. Let's test. And yep, there you go, our sphere fell down. So here we built everything exactly the same as we've always done with the usual components. And just by adding the convert to entity script, all the things get converted into dots physics entities. So we can pause and look and yep, we don't have anything on our game scene. And we have our entities over here in the entity debugger. Okay, so now let's use the dots physics components directly. So let's duplicate this and put it on the side. Now over here on this one, let's remove the box collider component and inside let's add a component. Over here we select dots, go into dots physics, and in this case let's select a physics shape. Now this component essentially merges all of the various colliders, so you have a single shape component type and over here you select the actual shape. So in this case we want it to be a box, okay. And again make sure you have the convert to entity component. And that's it. Now for the ball, let's duplicate our sphere, put it on the side. And again, get rid of the sphere collider as well as the rigid body. 
And now let's add a new component, go into dots, physics, and first we add the physics shape. In this case, we want a sphere. And there you go, you can see the gizmo, okay. And then let's also add a dot physics. In this case, let's add a physics body. So this is the equivalent for the rigid body. And as you can see, it looks pretty much the same. And again, make sure that it has the convert to entity script. Okay, so that's it for our setup. Over here, we have normal components and over here using the dots physics components directly. Let's test. And yep, both objects fell down with gravity. We have one working with normal components in the conversion workflow and one working directly with the dots physics components. Awesome. Now let's make them bounce. Over here on the dots physics object, in the physics shape, you can see a field for the restitution. So if we set it to one and keep the maximum, then this object will not lose any energy. So let's drag to one and test. And yep, there's our ball bouncing up and down. Now over here on the normal object, on the sphere collider, we also have a space for a physics material. So let's create a new physics material. Let's call it bouncy. And over here, we just set the bounciness to one and combine with the maximum. And then we simply drag our bouncy in there. All right, let's see. And yep, there you go. We have both spheres jumping up and down. So one is using normal components and one using dots physics components. Awesome. Now, since we're working with dots physics, that means we're working with the entity component system world. So again, you can see that we're not using game objects. And over here on the entity debugger, we can see all of our various entities. And you can see that both the one that we created with the dots physics components and the one that we created with the normal physics components, both of them have the exact same ECS components. So this is the conversion workflow in action. Now you can find all of the physics components in the package manual. As it says in there, we have all of these components that are added depending on if they are needed or not. So if a body does not move, like the floor, it does not have the physics velocity component. So over here, if I select the cube, there you go, you can look in here and you can see that it has the physics collider and nothing else. But if we select the sphere, and there you go, you can see that it has the physics collider, mass, velocity, and damping. This is another way that we can keep our code nice and performant since it will only have exactly the components that it needs and no more. All right, now let's write some code to interact with it. Over here, let's make a new C Sharp script call this our ball jump system. Now in here, let's get rid of the normal mono behavior things. Instead, we're going to be using unity.entities and we're going to make this a component system. All right, now here, let's do a simple entities dot for each cycle and let's cycle through all the entities with a physics velocity component. All right, so here we can modify the physics velocity. So for example, let's do a simple input. When we press on the space bar, let's try to move it up. So for that, we're going to modify the physics velocity, modify the linear, and set the linear y to a certain amount. All right, so that's it. Let's test. Okay, so here we have our bouncing ball, and by pressing space, and there you go, it does jump up. So every time we press space, we are interacting with dots physics. So all we need to do is modify a specific dots physics component and everything works great. So again, check out the manual to see all of the other physics components and you can interact with them the same way you do with any other component type. All right, so now let's check out a simple raycast. Over here, let's make a new C Sharp script. Call this our test raycast. Okay, here's our script. Now first, let's add the namespaces that we're going to need. So first of all, we need unity.entities. Then we also need to be using unity.mathematics. And finally, using unity.physics. Okay, now right now we have to make our own raycast function, but I'm guessing in the future there will be some sort of utilities class. So over here, let's make it. So we make a simple private void, our raycast. Now our raycast will have a float3 for our from position and another float3 for the to position. So we're going to do a raycast from and to. Now inside, first we need to get our current physics world system. So let's go into our world, into our default world, and we get an existing system. We get it of type Unity Physics Systems and get our build physics world. Now inside the build physics world, we can access the actual physics world and then the collision world. Okay, and now we can use our collision world and use the function cast ray. 
Now over here, as you can see, we require a Raycast input and it outputs a Raycast hit. So first the Raycast hit is very simple. So we make a new Raycast hit. And again here, pay attention, we are using the Raycast hit inside unity.physics and not the one inside unity engine. So this will be our second parameter. And now for the first one, we need a Raycast input. So let's create our Raycast input. And now it's in here that we have the from and to positions. So the start will be our from position. The end will be our to position. And then finally, we can add a filter. Now a filter is essentially the layers. So here in the filter, we have three fields. First of all, it belongs to, and we're going to say that this ray belongs to all layers. So in here, we're essentially going to negate a zero. If you're not familiar with the tilde character, this is a bit operation not. So we're doing not zero, which means we end up with all the bits set to one. I've made a video covering collisions, layer masks, and bitwise operators, so check that out to learn more. So here we're saying that this raycast belongs to all the layers, and we want it to collide with all the layers. And finally, group index, which is just another way of filtering collisions by overriding the bit masks, so for now let's leave it at zero. Alright, so here we have all the information inside of our raycast input. Essentially we just have the from and to. So we use this in our function. So we're passing the raycast input and then out for our raycast hit. And this one, as you can see, it returns a boolean. So it returns true if we hit something and false if not. So if. So here we know that we hit something and now we can actually get the entity that we hit. So we can access the raycast hit. And inside we have the rigid body index field. So here, as you can see, this field is an int. So this is the index of our rigid body. And now we can access the entity that refers to this rigid body by using our build physics world to access our physics world then we access the bodies which as you can see is a native slice of rigid body and we use this as our index so with this we have a rigid body and then we can access the entity all right so this is the entity that we hit with our raycast and now let's simply modify this one to return an entity and then we return this and if we do not hit anything then return entity.null Okay, so here we have our raycast function. We grab a from and a to, we do a cast ray, and we get our hit entity. All right, so now let's test this out. Let's use a simple normal update. Alright, so here we have some very basic code. We do an if input get mouse button down on the left mouse button. So when we click, we use the camera to create a normal screen point to ray. And then we use our raycast function, pass in the ray origin, and then direction times a certain amount. So let's check the log and see if we can click to grab an entity. Okay, so here we are. There's our bouncing ball in our console. Now if I click on nowhere, and there you go, we have entity.null. Now if I click on top of the floor, and there you go, we hit our entity. Click on top of the ball. And there you go, we have the other entity. So over here we have a raycast correctly grabbing what we click on. Now over here the function that we made is only grabbing the closest hit, but as you can see we have another one which takes a native list and returns all hits. So if you want more than the closest, that's what you would use. And again, here it is, click on nowhere, click on the ball, and click on the floor. All right, awesome. So here our simple raycast function is working correctly. However, we're interacting with our raycast directly very much from C Sharp. Now, in order to get the maximum performance, we should do our raycast from a burst compiled job. So check the manual to see one implementation of a raycast queue. All right, next, let's check out triggers and events. Now, to make a trigger, let's first make a simple box. So over here, for example, let's duplicate this one, put it a bit higher. Okay, so over here we have the normal floor and then this second box. Let's call this our trigger. And now in here on the physics shape, just like we have on a normal collider over here we have is trigger. So we simply click this and set it to true. All right, so that's pretty much it. Now we want to make it so that when the ball touches the trigger, we're going to make it automatically jump up. All right, so let's make our script. Let's make it something and call it test triggers. Now the way that we handle our triggers is with a job. So first let's make this a job component system.
Okay, now here we make our simple job. And in order to work with triggers, we need to implement I trigger events job. So this is the interface that we need to implement. So we have our execute function, which takes a trigger event object, and we can inspect this. And over here, you can see that we have our entity pair, collider, and body index. And inside the entity pair, we just have an entity A and B. So this is a trigger between two objects interacting. Okay, so now here when we get a trigger event, let's push the entity up like we did when pressing space. Now the way we modify components from the entities involved in this trigger is we need to have a component data from entity of type physics velocity. And then here first we check if has a component using our trigger event dot entities dot entity A. So if the entity A has a physics velocity component, then we want to modify it and jump it up. Okay, so if that one has a physics velocity, we jump it up and let's do the same thing in case it's entity B. All right, so just like this, when we have a trigger interaction, we're going to move up the entity that contains a velocity component. So in our demo, since we only have the ball, then only the ball will be moving up. And in here, we can also use burst compile into our job. All right, so now to schedule it down here, let's first make our trigger job. And we need to set the physics velocity entities. So all we do is get component data from entity of type physics velocity. So then we're going to return our trigger job. We're going to schedule it. And now in order to schedule it, we need the simulation and the physics world. So for that, let's also implement we also implement the onCreate function. And here we can go into the world and we get or create our system of type build physics world, which as you saw previously, this is inside using unity.physics.systems. So with our build physics world, we can use the second parameter, which is our physics world. Then the third one is the normal input dependencies. And now for the first one, it's the simulation. And the simulation, we get the step physics world. And we use the step physics world dot simulation. All right, so here we have everything necessary. We instantiate our new job. We pass in the components that we're going to need. So we access those. And if the entity has a component of type physics velocity, then we're going to move it up. And then we simply schedule and run our job. All right, so let's test. And yep, there you go, there's the ball. As soon as it touches the trigger, it starts going up. So there you go, it's not touching down here at all. So we can pause and over here, use our camera. And there you go, yep, the ball, as soon as it touches the trigger, it goes up, it no longer touches the floor. So just like this, we have implemented our simple triggers. So all it takes is essentially making a job which implements I trigger event jobs. Then in here, you can use the trigger event to access the entities involved in that interaction and do whatever you want to them. And over here on the physics sample project, you can go into setup and over here you have events. And then for example, let's open the portals. There you go, it's this scene, so let's play it out. And yep, over here you can see a different scenario. So the balls come in, they hit and they get teleported and moved around. And all of it is working using triggers. Another demo is here, which essentially has two triggers that are inverting the gravity. And here in the code, you can see a more robust implementation of the triggers. So you have a job still implementing I trigger events job. Then you grab the entity A and B. You try to see if they have the component that you're trying to modify. So over here, it's ignoring triggers overlapping other triggers, then also ignoring overlapping static bodies, and then down here doing all of the modifications. So just like this, we have our triggers working. Now, one more thing you may have heard about is the collaboration with Havoc. So essentially you have two possible physics engines. You have Unity Physics and Havoc Physics. Now, in terms of making your game, there's no difference. They both use the exact same components, so in order to change them, you'll literally just have a drop-down menu. So here on the scene, there's already a game object that contains a physics tab component. And using it over here, you have the simulation type. So it's currently set to Unity Physics, and it's in here that you can set to Havoc Physics. So you just set that, make sure you have the package installed and everything works exactly the same. So from a content creation standpoint, there's nothing extra you need to do. Both physics engines are great and they have different design philosophies related to speed, accuracy, and state or stateless. 
The main difference is Unity Physics is free, whereas Havoc is paid for. However, right now there's a free trial so you can play around with it. Here in the Physics tab, you can also see, for example, you can modify the gravity. So instead of having it pull down at 9.81 units, let's pull it up. And there you go, just like that, all of a sudden everything is floating. Now there's still a lot more to physics, like joints, hinges, collider casts, and a lot more. I want to keep this video as a simple beginner introduction, so I will leave it here for now, but I will be covering Unity Dots Physics more in the future. So let me know specifically what you'd like to see regarding Dots Physics. If you want to explore it for yourself, then check out the Physics Package Manual, along with the samples included. This video is made possible thanks to these awesome supporters. Go to patreon.com slash unitycodemonkey to get some perks and help keep the videos free for everyone. As always, you can download the project files and utilities from unitycodemonkey.com. Subscribe to the channel for more Unity tutorials, post any questions you have in the comments, and I'll see you next time.